Conservative Christian values is a frequently used phrase in Oklahoma, especially in election years. Expression of faith and religious affiliation is important to most candidates and voters. But in this Oklahoma Votes report, we learned that for a number of Oklahoma voters, religion and politics just don't mix. My grandparents brought our family to this church more than a half century ago. This Political ads bombarded Oklahoma voters via media during the recent primary election. The words conservatism and faith were common themes. To lend a hand, lead a prayer. Broken bread together, prayed together, and worked together for the conservative cause. As Oklahoma Speaker, but TW conservative Shannon Christian values have no political influence on a number of Oklahoma voters. And many feel they must keep their views about religion and politics hidden from the mainstream. Much of this video shot at an Oklahoma City restaurant is blurred because the majority of the 70 people don't want their identities revealed. They are members of Oklahoma Atheists, a nonprofit organization which provides a community and forums for those who don't believe in God. You've agreed to do this interview, but you don't want to be identified. Why is that? Because the state is 92 plus percent Christian and there's a great deal of uh, misunderstanding about atheism and hostility, or hostility is probably the best word I can come up with. Mike is a public accountant who serves as the group's treasurer. Another unidentified member is a graphic designer we're calling Tony. But it's a feeling that you know that you can't come out, you can't talk to people about this topic because people get very offended very quickly um, with most of us. Religion is not a topic. While Marion Dilbeck and his partner Lindsay Stanford don't mind being identified, they don't broadcast the fact they have no religious affiliation. It's a bit difficult to live in a state that's overwhelmingly religious as Oklahoma is. Um, you have to be a little bit careful about in whom you confide. You don't want to offend people at work and so on. But I've been able to find friends that mostly share my convictions. Red McCall is president of Oklahoma Atheists. He says members include Republicans and Democrats as well as people from all walks of life. So we have a lot of different people that are in the group, you know, whether they're old or young or gay or straight or black, white, men, women, we're, we're all over the place, all different types of lifestyles, all different types of occupations, you know, doctors, lawyers, truck drivers, cooks, physicians, you know, anybody. Group members communicate through meetup.com, which helps people with shared interests plan events and facilitate offline meetings. And I can be able to tell you that we have uh, 860 some odd meetup groups throughout the entire world that use the, the label atheists uh, as the, the term for their people and we are the fifth largest out of all of those. So we have 1,942 members as of today and those are all active members uh, and we have close to 30 different meetups a month. We do anything from social, political, to uh, uh, social, political, educational, parenting, uh, outreach, volunteering. McCall believes the large number of atheists in Oklahoma is reflective of the ostracism non-believers feel while living in the middle of the Bible Belt. Voting in Oklahoma is depressing for me. You know, I go do it at every opportunity and go, um, and I do feel like, you know, I have no representation in Oklahoma. Although I do have like many atheists, uh, Stanford identifies with liberal candidates, which are hard to find in Oklahoma. I typically give money to candidates in other states that represent my views. Is the only way I feel like I get any representation at all in our government. But both she and Dilbeck are active voters. I recognize that politicians have to be pious publicly in order to be elected. That's a given. What their private convictions are, I would hope, wouldn't matter in the way that they conduct government. Many atheists come from deeply religious families. Kate Fulgham's parents are independent, fundamental Baptists who at first had a hard time accepting the fact their daughter was an atheist. As far as my family, like they've been very supportive and my mom especially, she's just been, I just want you to be happy. That's the most important thing to me and however you get there, that's okay with me. And, and I love her for that, I mean that's amazing. And that's huge coming from the background that I grew up in because we were taught to ostracize people like me. Tony's mother is a Southern Baptist. She's very confused. She feels that it, somehow she let me down, that maybe she could have taught me better when we went to church. She felt that she failed 
um, it doesn't quite understand why I don't have the belief system that I grew up in. Sharing political or religious views in the workplace is something he doesn't do. I'm worried about losing my job. Um, where I work, there's a large Christian organization that all of the members of the administration, they meet together, they go to church together, and being a non-believer, I'm, I'm worried that I will be fired for this, or fired for another reason, but no, it's because I've been identified as an atheist. And the atheist we talked to said in the voting booth, independent reasoning is their guide. I'm registered independent with no party affiliation, so I have to wait until the parties choose, and then I go for the option that's not as bad. The one that's, that seems like they'll be better for equality and just basically acknowledging everyone has equal rights. A recent poll published by the Pew Research Center shows that nationwide, 53% of voters would be less likely to vote for a presidential candidate who does not believe in God.